Hey, it's Todd, and today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with RabbitMQ for MQTT lightweight PubSub messaging in the Oracle Cloud. So let's get started. All right, so like I said in this video, I wanna show you how to get started with RabbitMQ in a virtual instance in the Oracle Cloud. Now, the first question you might be asking yourself is why RabbitMQ? And that is a very good question because here on the Oracle Cloud, we do have the Oracle Streaming Service, which is a very nice service for messaging in your applications. And the answer to that question is that sometimes applications have different needs. And lately I've been doing a lot of work with uh, IoT devices and IoT devices just naturally work a little bit better with MQTT. It's much lighter weight and there's native clients that you could use for your IoT devices like Arduino that can speak PubSub uh, with an MQTT topic. So that is why I've been working with it lately and I'm gonna show you really quick how to get started with it. It's really easy to get started and get it up and running on a instance. In fact, you can even run it and I have and I do run it on a always free instance in my always free tenancy in the Oracle Cloud. If you want to see how to get started in less than 60 seconds with an always free instance, click on this link over here. And otherwise, if you have an instance already running, you're good to go. And I'll show you how to SSH into that machine and get everything installed and up and running really quickly. So let's get started. All right, so I am remoted into this instance and I've already gone ahead and set up a domain name that is pointing to the IP address for this instance. So you wanna make sure that you do that ahead of time. Whoever does your DNS hosting, make sure that the subdomain or domain name that you're using points to the IP address of your cloud instance. So I've already done that ahead of time and that's all good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do here on this machine is install Docker. And to do that, I need to enable the Oracle Linux 7 add-ons, and then I just simply call sudo yum install docker engine. And that's gonna do its thing, it's gonna run through and install Docker. Now that Docker has been installed, we want to make sure that we start Docker. And we want to enable the Docker service so that it starts every single time when we start this VM up. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we can enable Docker to be used by non-root users. So unless you want to use sudo commands every time you run a Docker command, you're going to have to run the following few commands to get everything working for non-root users. And now that we've done that, we need to make sure that we log out and then log back in. Otherwise, we will not be able to run Docker commands as non-root users. All right, so now that we are back in, we should check and make sure that uh, we are in the OPC users home directory. Now that we are in the OPC users home directory, we're going to want to make a directory called RabbitMQ. And in this directory, we're going to store some files that we will mount to the Docker container so that the Docker container can keep its settings across restarts. Now we're going to want to create a file called enabled underscore plugins and populate it with the RabbitMQ management plugin as well as the RabbitMQ MQTT plugin. And this will be used to uh, tell RabbitMQ what plugins to install when it starts up. So create that file and populate it with the proper data. And now we need to make sure that we shimad that file so that it has 777 permissions. Typically, we don't want to add 777, but in this case, there's nothing sensitive at all inside this file. And if you do not do this, you're gonna have some problems when the Docker container tries to start everything up. It will not be able to read this file. So let's go ahead and do that. And before we move forward at all in starting our Docker container, you should definitely make sure that you have an ingress rule in your security list that is tied to your virtual machine, to your cloud instance. 
that exposes ports 80, 443, and 1883. These ports are uh, necessary for HTTP, HTTPS traffic, as well as your MQTT traffic, which is on port 1883. If you do not add these ingress rules, you will be unable to access the web management UI, as well as be unable to pass any traffic through your MQTT broker. All right, back in our SSH session for our RabbitMQ instance, we're finally ready to run our Docker con container, and I have the proper Docker statement here pasted in, and I wanna walk through one step at a time to kind of show you what is going on here. So the first line here, we have docker run dash D. Dash D just means uh, to run the container in daemon mode, which is basically in the background. Um, there will be no console output here. It is just gonna fire it up and return control back to the shell. Uh, the next line here is restart always. This means that every time Docker restarts, in other words, maybe you've rebooted the virtual machine, this container will always restart. Uh, the next line, host name. This tells RabbitMQ what our host name is. It's important that we add that. The next line down, we're exposing some ports here. Port 15672 is what RabbitMQ uses for its web-based admin tool. So that is the port inside the Docker container. I'm exposing that outside the Docker container on port 80 so that I can just hit the domain name directly without a port name in the web browser and I'll be able to hit that uh, without adding the port name. Port 1883 is the RabbitMQ MQTT port and port 443 uh, if we're using SSL for the admin, that is on port 15671 inside the container, and we would expose that externally as port 443. The next two lines are the default username and password that are going to be set up for your RabbitMQ account. You can use whatever you need here. It is a nice way to pass these credentials in up front and not have to worry about setting them uh, via command line after the, f after the fact. The next two lines are mounting two different volumes. The first one is the enabled plugins file that we created, and that is mounted in Etsy RabbitMQ enabled plugins. And that is so that RabbitMQ can pick that file up and know what to do, know what it needs to install when it starts up. The next line is mounting a local directory, that RabbitMQ directory, to var lib RabbitMQ inside the container. And again, this is so it, RabbitMQ can persist those uh, database files and every all its settings and configurations uh, it can persist those across restarts. It stores those on your VM's uh, local drive. In the next line, we have name RabbitMQ. This is just a friendly way to refer to this with our Docker commands later on. And then finally on the last line is the actual Docker image that we're going to pull and use. And that is the RabbitMQ 3-management tag. So if we run that, and now that the container has been created, we can check and see docker ps-a. We can see that it was created 11 seconds ago and it's been up for seven seconds. We're going to want to start checking uh, probably within about a minute, but we're gonna to want to check the docker logs for that container. In this case, we could refer to the name RabbitMQ. After about a minute, RabbitMQ will be up and running and ready to go. So, as we can see here, according to our logs, the server startup is complete and the plugins RabbitMQ Management, Web Dispatch Management Agent, and MQTT have been installed and we are ready to start working with MQTT on our instance. So if we head over to our browser and we hit the domain name that we've set up, in this case, rabbitmq-demo.todarsharp.com, we are able to log into the admin console. So once we do that, we can go through and take a look at all the different tabs and manage our instance as needed. And we're set up and we're ready to go. So then the final thing to do here is to test out the MQTT functionality on that machine. So let's hop back over to the console and use mosquito sub and mosquito pub to publish and subscribe to a topic and test things out. Back in our terminal, you can see here that we can now use Mosquito Sub and Mosquito Pub 
to publish and subscribe to a topic on this brand new RabbitMQ instance that we've just installed and turned up. So on the top console here, we have a call to mosquito sub. So in this case, we're going to subscribe to a topic called demo slash topic on that host with our credentials on port 1883. So if we hit enter there and everything's just going to sit there and listen and wait for a message to be published on that particular topic. Coming down to the bottom window here, we have a call to mosquito pub. Also on that demo slash topic at the same host with the same credentials on the same port and the dash M switch being our actual message that we're going to publish. So if we hit enter here, we should see the message passed to the subscription. And we can see it was successfully received by the mosquito sub window. And if we run a couple more, we can see that the subscription will listen to everything on that topic. So that will just about do it for this video on installing and configuring RabbitMQ for MQTT on the Oracle Cloud. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for some further videos where I show you a little bit more about how I've used RabbitMQ and MQTT with IoT devices to do some lightweight messaging back and forth and also some integrations with Node-RED coming up in future videos. So again, if you really enjoy this content, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.